Once upon a time, back in the early days of movies, the double feature was a commodity. All right, come on, hurry up, Brian. I don't want to miss the movie trivia slides before the movie. The back-to-back -back movies played and sold together, advertising each other for a long night out at the cinema for the family. Fast forward to the now, a time of desperation and survival for any movie released to the big screens. Even those featuring superheroes once thought safe are now equally prone to a financial pounding. Dueling for your attention, like gladiators in an empty coliseum, scared of each other, shifting release schedules in hopes for that extra dime. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? But before us now, a revelation reveals itself. Barbenheimer has come to save us. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And you can thank Tenet because apparently this might have all just been a studio hissy fit. A war between studios which accidentally transformed into maybe the most successful marketing of all time. Barbie, the movie about the infamous doll that brought joy to millions of little girls. And Oppenheimer, the movie about the guy who built the bomb that brought death to 200,000 Japanese civilians. I'm trying to understand it. But here's the thing, all the memes aside, what if the double feature actually came back because of this? It got to the point where even the studios realized what was going on. Like, hey, are you guys uh, seeing this? It's free real estate. The actors, the directors, all happily encouraging the frenzy. I mean, I'll be going to see Barbie 100%, so I can't wait to see it. It's a perfect double bill. I think actually start your day with Barbie, then go straight into Oppenheimer, and then Barbie Chaser. In my lifetime, the old man that I am, I have never witnessed what we are witnessing. These two movies are from competing studios releasing on the same day. What usually happens when two large budget movies release on the same day is one trait that big Hollywood movie studio execs do not possess, as they have politely demonstrated so far with the Actors Guild strikes, is a willingness to share. In 1980, um, CEOs like him made 30 times what the worker, what their lowest worker was making. Now Bob Iger makes 400 times what his low, lowest worker is. Usually, if two movies release worldwide on the same day, that means they'll have to share the ticket sales because the available audience is only a certain size. Unless, of course, you could somehow come up with a way to increase said audience. The thing is, I think we're entering into or transitioning into a new era of movies. Since the pandemic, things started drastically changing, and they haven't stopped even from then. There are no more safe bets. It's the Wild West when it comes to what's successful and what's not. Pew, pew, they shoot, and sometimes they miss hard. It makes no sense. The only thing that does make sense is that nothing makes sense. Maybe this new era is one where original stories and artist creativity blossom like little children and their Barbies. Or maybe it's an era where all the movies are written and directed by AI and the common man sees no issues with it. Uh, no, I, it does seem like we're, li we're, we're living... Um, we're living through another uh, repressive time uh -huh. when it comes to cinema. Whatever may occur, I'm here to pitch for the return of the double feature. Because with this Barbenheimer example, it's that first path. A world where good movies do good. But shall we get into the nitty gritty of why the double feature is the best new idea since shoes? First off, as we know and have witnessed over the last months, the double feature presents a brilliant and cheap new way of marketing. It seems that movies nowadays only do well if they can crack the viral code. However, aside from the money business, this double feature concept could also provide the world with a beautiful form of curation and widening of taste for a moviegoer. I see a young girl, maybe not too young, say 15, fascinated by the bright and pink world of Barbie, participates in the double feature and thus with this conduit has her eyes opened to the vast world of Christopher Nolan. Maybe biopics, even simply history as an interest. She then watches Dunkirk and loves it, a movie she could have never heard of or had the desire to experience if it hadn't been for the double feature. Or I see a diehard comic book movie fan who hails Heath Ledger's The Dark Knight performance as the greatest performance of all time. <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. Through this very same conduit, yet from the other side, has his eyes opened to the world of Greta Gerwig watches Lady Bird and finds a new love for independent filmmaking he would have never discovered had it not been 
for the double feature. Bringing an opportunity to test people's movie comfort zones, bringing a new excitement back to driving to the cinemas on a Tuesday night. Maybe they even start cutting trailers together in one trailer, marketing both movies. That would be something. But then you have a problem. How do you decide which movies get paired up? Not only that, who decides? Is it the studios, the individual theaters, or the internet? Plus, what if a movie can't find a partner? Do solo releases still exist? And then, just as all the once thought great ideas that didn't last, when does the double feature lose its magic? It already lost it once. Surely not every double feature would live up to the success that we see now. And eventually audiences might get sick of the pairing. And we fall back into a dark age. The truth is, there's only one way to find out. It's been a very long time since the world has gotten so excited over movies. I'm seeing Barbenheimer posts and discussions from people that never usually give movies a second thought beyond their Netflix recommendation page. Ahead of both of these movies, trailers played for multiple movies that look really good too. It's truly a beautiful time. I just pray that it lasts for a little longer. Wouldn't that be nice? Shut the fuck up, Donnie.